five o'clock. I'll call Ready. the meeting to order. Would you call roll call, please? Councilperson Brenny? Here. Rooney? Harry? Yes. Hanson? McKinsey? Here. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone here this evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, you may make comments on the items on the agenda as they are shown, and also item number five is the citizens' opportunity to address items that are not on the agenda. So with that, we'll go on to item number two. Are there any uh, conflicts of interest this evening? No. no. Okay. We'll move on to consent agenda number three, A, approval of agenda. B, approval of the minutes of the September 9th, 2014 council meeting. C, receipts and disbursements. D, fiscal year 2013-14 year end transfers. E, consideration of resolution number 2104-17, entitled resolution approving 2014 fiscal year street finance report. F, renewal license Viking Bay Sports Bay Bar and Grill. Inc. Doing business as Viking Bay Sports Bar and Grill Class C liquor license with outdoor service and Sunday sales. G. Consideration of application by Joel, Zach, Jake, and Wade Williams, Mike Zimmerman, and Tom and Tanner Crab for a bowl license for hunting inside the city limits. Curtis. Curtis Blaze, could you elaborate on the transfers? Um, there's a full copy of them you're welcome to go look at, Curtis. They're all written out. They're basically built within the annual budget. They include anything from um, uh, plan transfers from uh, the TNA accounts to the general funds, um, from the uh, to pay for debt service for certain uh, utility elements, and for occupational fees for, and local option sales tax transfers. How much, those those, transfers. how much do those three items equal? Which three items? Any, well, you said all the accounts, all of the numbers are actually provided on the sheet. You can see a line. It's it's itemized. I see on the sheet. So you're welcome to go over the sheet and take a look at all of them. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? I would move passage of consent agenda. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent of agenda. Are there any further questions? If not, please call for a vote. Councilperson McGinty. Councilperson McGinty. Yes. Brittany. Y yes. Perry. Yes. Motion here. Thank you. We'll move on to number four, public hearings. Uh, now is the time and place for the public hearing on the proposal to issue a hospital facility revenue refunding bonds in the aggregate. Principal amount not to exceed eleven thousand five no, $11,500,000 and to loan the proceeds of the bonds to Loring Hospital. Have you had any written comments? No. Are there any oral comments? Curtis? Um, <clears throat> we had a conversation uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was, uh, where you explained how this was not truly an $11 million loan. Eleven and a half million dollar loan. Could you go over the highlights of that? <laughs> sure, they're all covered right here. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, the uh, the basic explanation um, kind of stands the way it was last time. And back in two thousand seven, the hospital received uh, um, use of to bond against the city's bonding capacity for the purposes of their expansion project. Um, and at this time, they're looking at refinancing that. So they would be looking at refinancing the outstanding amount to pay off the existing bond, take out a new bond at a lower interest rate, therefore reducing the amount they're paying on a, on a what, monthly or annual basis? I don't even know how you guys have this. Both. So. <laughs> And um, so right now, your outstanding bond balance, we're, I mean, we don't have visibility of that. Do you know what it's it is? It's right at $11 million. Right at $11 million. Um, The way it impacts us, I've actually, um, past December 31st of this year, it had no direct impact on our financial capabilities. Past December 31st? Correct. Uh, prior to December 31st, if something comes up, what kind of impact could it have? Uh, well, in that period of time, and of course, it would take us a couple of months to even get a bonding scenario set up in our case. Sure. Um, I would tell you that there would be no impact on this. Because and it takes us, for, for us to go from start to actually bonding, it takes a couple of months to do, Curtis. 
So by the time we would be ready to bond anything, it'd be January before that time period anyway. Okay. So it wouldn't have any impact on us. And this is going to act as pass through money. Is that accurate? Excuse me, I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. I asked if it was going to act as pass through money for the. I'm not real savvy how the city's involvement is, but what my understanding is, there's no liability to the city at all. And since we're a 501c3 corporation, the bonds will be uh, tax exempt at the federal level. They have to pass through a, a municipality or government entity. Um, I was maybe on a misunderstanding, Adam, but I, our bond company told me, in fact, I called them to confirm with it. That uh, yeah, I've had I, I've actually had them give it to me both ways. I've had to tell me it would impact me through the end of the calendar year, and I've had them tell me that it wouldn't uh, it would impact me. It wouldn't have any impact at all on me. But me regardless, from our standpoint, Mike, if it would take me three months to set up a bond issue anyway, it, it, it's it's irrelevant to whether I can do it for. Uh, for through December or not through December, it's irrelevant from the purposes of our bonding ability. Well, and for the record, I mean, the reason we're doing it, obviously, the interest rate climate has changed since 07, and uh, so it's going to be a substantial savings to us. We won't know the effective rate until they put the bond out in the market, but it looks like they could cut interest rate approximately half. Wow. Good. So, substantial savings over the life of the bonds. Why are we doing it now? Because the bonds are now available. You know, you enter in bonds, you can't pay them off to it. We've paid off some early ones as they staggered, and now uh, we're approaching our payoff date or refinancing date. So that's what we're pursuing that for. I've got another question that may more accurately answer what, I, what I'm trying to ask. Um, is there going to be a point where you approve $11 million moving through? Not other than the final, there'll be a signature period for the final agreements. Mm -hmm. But as far as you'll see money on our books going to their books, no, there will be none of that going on. All right. Thank you. So basically the email that you forwarded me from the accountant says that the only thing it would impact on our bonding capacity possibly would be a 500 thousand and change anyway. Yeah. Five hundred and sixty thousand. The rest of it is is a different it's not really a general obligation bond, it's a revenue. Rev it, it, it's, it's a bank special finance. purpose bond is technically yeah. I believe what they consider these type of bonds. So it wouldn't be the same kind of bonding that we would necessarily be using for a street project or something like that anyway. It, is there anything else you think the public might need to know in order to fully understand what's going on here? I would say that probably the most important point is it's a refinancing bond. It's basically replacing an existing bond. It's not expanding the time period for the bond. It's actually saving the hospital money. That's probably the, in a nutshell, that's what this is for. Thank you. We plan on keeping our payments at the same level, so the three will be paying off much sooner. And the bonds would be sold before the end of the year then? Yes. Uh, to tell you what data, I don't know. I mean, now, the only reason I'm asking is, I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I want to make sure that if they were not refinanced until January, if that would put it into our 215. But no. it, as long as they're doing it in 214, that's that's to our benefit and to yours. I think yours. our goal is to start selling bonds maybe sometime in October. Mid October. And then we can pay off the other bonds in December. I would point out, Bruce, this was the same time schedule that this was done last time, particularly, I believe, because of that December type of discussion. Uh, it's advantageous to do this process in the f late in the fall in order for this process to be concluded without having any general impact on the community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. I just yeah. it's big numbers. Yeah. Well, it, it's big numbers, and I you know don't want you know, my my only concern was I didn't want to handicap what we could do. I think Nor did we? No. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that's and and that's. I think it's a wonderful project. And, and that's I, I why mean, I called an underwriter again a couple of days ago because I was confused by that too. And he informed me that it would not impact your bonding authority. That's above my pay grade. So <laughs> but he also made it very clear there's no liability to the city. Right. And, and that's based on the fact that it's not established through a general obligation. Right. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion? Call for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. 
I would make such a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing. Sandy, would you call for the vote, please? Councilperson Brenny? Yes. Perry? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Number one, following is consideration of revolu revolution. Resolution number 2014-18 entitled Resolution Authorizing and Providing for the Issuance of Not to Exceed 11500000 Aggregate Principal Amount of Hospital Revenue Refunding Bonds, Loring Hospital Project, and Approving the Execution of Documents Relating to the Bonds and Related Matters. I would move passage of resolution number 2014-18 Okay. Entitled resolution authorizing the hospital to do all of the things that are listed there. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. A motion has been made and seconded to, to approve resolution number 2014 18, the resolution authorizing and providing for the issuance of not to exceed 11500 aggregate principal amount of hospital revenue funding, refunding bonds, loading hospital project, and approving the execution of documents relating to the bonds and related matters. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson McGinty? Yes. Brady? Yes. Carry? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number five is citizens' opportunity. Uh, before I say that, thank you, gentlemen. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank also, you for Angie, all you for, for being here. It's one of the great assets that we have. And I well, just FYI, I asked Angie to pull up the other day. I think we're approximately 110 employees and our payroll is approximately $4.11 million. So it's pretty significant. Very significant. Oh, yes. And just the benefits you offer are significant as we are. It's really important to have it here. Posing for growth in the future, we need to have this medical community here. And it's a high paying job for you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in the future, if there's anything else that you could. You know, no, because what's well, very interesting about Warren Hospital across the state, we're one of the very few hospitals that don't, that, that not receive any tax dollars. That's pretty unusual. Pocahontas, it's some from the city, BB is a county hospital, oh, Humboldt. Sure. So it's pretty unusual. So far, not going to be able to survive without any tax dollars, which is highly unusual. That's plastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob. <bomb. laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes, I want to wait until you have that for the same Okay, now we'll do item number five, which is citizens' opportunity to address the council on items not on the agenda. Are there any this evening? I have one just yeah. little side comment. I was out to visit Denver this weekend out in Henry, Illinois. And they did something really cool out there. They had, I don't know if it's the chamber, the city, or a collaborative effort between them, but at their city park they had fire trucks, police cars, ambulances, <coughs> construction equipment. Uh, they had a hot air balloon. It was too windy for that. Uh, school buses, <coughs> kind of equipment you can imagine. The family took the kids out. The kids got to climb on and play them like the sirens. And I thought that would be something. I was going to approach uh, a chamber. <coughs> I mean, that's something to think about in, in the future sometime. I don't know if they want to do it in, in, with Oktoberfest, or, but I thought it was pretty cool. And the kids really had fun climbing on the stuff. I didn't ask the question, who's liable? That's a pretty <laughs> That was what was in my mind. Who's liability? <laughs> but it was really neat. It was uh, the firemen. They took the little kids, they gave them in the truck, turned on the sirens, and it was a pretty neat little event. I thought it was something kind of neat. So I was going to mention that the council, I was going to approach the chamber, maybe they consider doing that sometime in conjunction with some other event. I'll talk with Brandy about it. Yeah. yeah. You, you know. It would be good to do it in conjunction with the Oktoberfest because I yeah. hear of a lot of communities that have a community picnic, and that would be kind of like that. You know, you know there's a national uh, movement for, I think they call it neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, exchanges and so on. You know, that could be maybe done in conjunction with the chamber and maybe equipment businesses here in town and uh, maybe coordinate it that way. Yeah, it was really cool. They had excavators, backhoes, farm machinery, and just all sorts all of course, large population they serve. But it was pretty, it was fun to take grandkids, let them climb on and do all that stuff. It was a pretty neat little function. So I mentioned that to Bill last night. I was just going to mention the council and talk to the chamber about it. <coughs> well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for good, the good, idea. Good photo opportunity for the uh, paper on something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank okay, thanks. Is there anything else anyone might have? Okay, if not, we'll move on to item number six, continuing business, Chautauqua Park Improvement Update. Well, the trenching has been completed over there. I know MG was over there looking at planning on finishing up the electrical portion before the light system. Um, 
we were hoping to get that this week, but we'll see whether it gets installed or not. I think probably the weather will have some say in that process. Uh, then I know uh, Bruce and a gaggle of people have been down there doing painting in, in the stone shelter. So, uh, so it's getting closer and closer to uh, starting to close up elements of the project. If that, that electrical, if it is completed, well, the, I know the chamber was thinking it would assist in having the jump things in the park for Oktoberfest. They wouldn't have to be way oh. back in that. And also, Christmas time when we have the lighted thing, they can actually have uh, more lights closer to the entrance of the park. Um, and we are having it again, so it doesn't have to be something from that place online. If anybody wanted to put up a lighted event, they can make it. They can do anything they want. So encourage your neighbors and friends. So we really have a good showing this year. What would, let me just throw this out. What would happen if the city were actually to do a lighted display in the front of the park? I mean, I kind of wish we could do the entrance to the park. Entrance to the lighted I mean, thing, a welcome. I mean, if we could do a welcome to the, I mean, some kind of a, a lighted welcome display. I mean, I know, I know we're in times of economic austerity, but I mean, is that? Would, I mean, it might be a really good goodwill thing, if, you know, that the city itself could come up with something. I believe we could get lights easy enough. It would be just what to put them on, and I don't know what about that arch that the city owns. Could it be? Put in something to make it higher so we could cover it with lights for the I entrance. Have to look into it. Kind then of we might have the stuff to do it with already. <coughs> so we can look into that. Okay, anything else there? If not, we'll go to seven miscellaneous where this probably should have been visited about. But A is consideration of resolution number 2014. Dash 19, the resolution approving application to the Sac County Endowment <coughs> Foundation for the Sac City's Library Computer Learning Information Literacy Area. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. <laughs> Does everybody know what that is? Would you like some explanation about it? Or? I'd love some. No, I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, it's basically what they're looking at doing is they're looking at putting the uh, um, they want to move the computer area out into the open public area um, so that it's more uh, user friendly. And uh, I know they want to make some changes to how it flows in there so that uh, they can use it for more more purposes. One of the other concerns I think is um, ADA accessibility because right now where the computers are, you can't get a wheelchair through the door. I mean, there's, so they're, they're looking at Rewiring. Uh, there's there's no computers or anything in this. It's using what they already have, but new desks, new places to put them. Moving it out, kind of off to the left, I think, when you come in, and doing wiring coming out of the ceiling so you don't have the cords on the floor for people to trip over. Is there yeah. any? This doesn't have any any uh, financial contribution from the city. It's just a support, right? Correct. As the <coughs> for the library, we would be there. and they were required to have this for their application purposes. I would move passage of resolution number two thousand fourteen dash nineteen. Second. Is there any further discussion? There is. Uh, besides just moving it, is, is there some sort of thing they have to build, or what exactly is the money going to be used for in, in the application? Do you know that? I think it's primarily going to be used for the equipment necessary. I mean, it's one thing to move the computers, but you need all, as Bruce was saying, all the equipment that goes with um, a having a computer area. You know, wiring. You know, the the wiring. Talking about wiring. Talking about said it was the vertical that. infrastructure that was required for the electrical part, the vertical infrastructure that was required for uh, getting the new connections to the computers, to the internet, and perhaps some other building things for them to sit on. Right. I know this is a vertical infrastructure grant, and I think that's the vertical infrastructure that they are building. 
Okay. Thank you. If there is no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. Council Person McGinty? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Bruce? Perry? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Seven miscellaneous B is consideration of resolution number 2014 20 entitled Resolution Supporting Nomination of Sac City Monument Square on National Register of Historic Places. Yes. Uh, who owns that? Is is that just is that the county or? It's the county's property. Yes. Okay, so this would be just a a shine of or shine a sign of support uh, for that application process. Is is it the county that make that's making the application? Uh, I don't know how it's officially applied for. Is the county considered the actual applicant, Bruce? Um. The person who fills it out is considered the actual applicant. I mean, you, you, the person who fills it out is the person who nominates it for there. Um, <laughs> what if the place that doesn't person. want it? <laughs> that, was, that was why, I mean, the, the county supervisors have already given their blessing to the application. I mean, I've, I've got it ready to send in when we get, the, when we get a resolution signed. So you necessarily don't have to be the owner to do this. Right? You don't have to be the owner to do it. No, right, that's what I'm saying. But the ownership is a little, yeah, the county has it, but if you, going back through the records, the ownership is a little vague. It was maybe one time county, it kind of went back to city. The city gave the county the permission to use it. But there was never a transfer of property back. So I just would like the resolution so that we can say, Whomever owns it, even if it is unclear, it's supported. It's a lot easier to have when you when you go to defend these things in front of a group of people kind of like this to have saying, okay, yes, we have the permission from the city, we have the permission from the county. The ownership seems to have been the county for a while, but it does if it doesn't look that way legally, the city approves it too. So we're good on both sides. I'm just asking, I guess, for um, a blessing so that we can to make life easier in the future maybe uh, i'll make the motion to approve uh, resolution number 2014-20 uh, is there any further discussion or questions if not uh, motion has been made and seconded and i forgot to do that first um to approve resolution number 2014-20 the resolution supporting nomination of the Sac City Monument Square on National Register of Historic Places. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Perry? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you all. I'll make my life a Okay, uh, next is the Committee and Department Review Board. Are there? Any? Just as a point of information, uh, where where are we on the roof on the sewer plant? Are we going to have it so that it's not hopefully yeah. not leaking the, in the uh, winter? Uh, Dwayne and Tom were working out uh, plans to complete the patch process uh, here in the next couple of weeks. They formulated a plan on what they were going to do, and now it's just a matter of scheduling the uh, the manpower and actually. at the play area, there were some deficiencies that were found that apparently weren't taken care of and they're working with Boland, that doesn't sound too promising that it's going to get repaired, but they're in the process of still working with them. Okay. There's a lot of the rubber mats that some are you know, offset and different oh. things like that. Some okay. of them are real soft and, and uh, everybody's passing the blame too. Aren't they under else. warranty of any kind? Of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's $12,000 to fix that thing and 
city can offer for potential businesses coming in and our incentive program and that's been at least codified and not codified but it's you been talk about put onto pieces of paper so it's all there easily oh. to see for potential businesses. It's good to have something in hand instead of let me see what we can do for it. Right. I agree that's a good thing. So that that's been brought up to date, which is good. Um, the rec center had, community center had a very good open house and I believe they signed up over 30 new members, mm -hmm. which is really good. And they have quite a few renewals also, we told me. Mm -hmm. That's good. There's a lot of good things <coughs> going on there. And Adam, Bruce, and I approached the uh, uh, Board of Supervisors oh, a couple of weeks ago about the uh, development area north of town and uh, there's a deadline, I think, what, November 1st, where they're supposed to, supposed to get back to us. It's kind of pending uh, their lawyer, uh, Mr. Smith, looking it over and, and, you know, making his recommendations and uh, anything else that either of you would want to add to that as to where we stand with that. It seems like they're pretty receptive. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it would, be, it would be setting up an urban development area really from the city limits within our, out, out basically two miles going just slightly north of what is Highway 20, so that we would have a way to work with the county on whether it would be TIF financing or whatever, those things would be happening if there were new businesses wanting to locate there. So that we could have a way to help us pay for infrastructure that would need to be put in place for that to happen. The county would actually be the one doing the TIF district, but it would be, it sets up that we're agreeing to play together. We have talked through the things in advance. So if people are looking at it, they, they know that at least there's a plan and process to move forward. Yeah, yeah and I might add that uh, Rick Hunziker from Region 12 kind of updated the supervisors and, and, and the other people in attendance as to you know, the mechanics of how this would work, the urban development as well as the TIF district. And one thing that he did suggest would be is if you could have in place a, not just a plan of how to go forward, but even an option to lease some land or to have a parcel of land of ownership by the county uh, so that it would be considered more shovel ready to, you know, start a project if some business uh, we're interested in coming to the area. So the more shovel ready that you can get, the thing that he made the point is, is the closer you are to letting them have a turnkey. <coughs> yes. Um, the set community center is looking at. They formed a committee, I believe, and they're looking at offering a day of activities, breakfast and lunch. And I think late afternoon they would have a movie and a snack at the library on all the Mondays where the kids don't have school. So if anybody has something they'd like to share, like a skill they'd like to teach, or a game they'd like to teach, they're looking for some volunteers to get this. Because if the, just the staff at the rec center has to do it, and they, like in the early morning, they had 30-some kids at, when they came, when there was a late start at school, they're gonna need a little of assistance. So if you know anybody, you might mention it to them. And if there's any way you can help out, you might stop by and talk to Kyle. Oktoberfest is a week from Thursday. Mm -hmm. And they're having it at the Chautauqua building. That way if it rains, we're under wraps and we don't have to move all the picnic tables, which is hard on backs and picnic tables. So, and they will have some bounce houses for the kids. And I don't know, I think, is, the, are they, they gonna, is there, are they gonna have the car, the, the fire department that they always have, are they? Oh, yeah. 
I know this is looking a long way out. I was talking to Brandy at Chamber today, and she said that um, for their annual review on the 28th of October, there is a time where the review committee will meet with city officials, and she was wanting to make sure that we were all invited. That's at 2.45 on the 28th of October. It's a Tuesday. And a week from today, don't forget, we were invited by SCTD to that meeting. Uh, I believe it starts at 7 or 7.30? 7 o'clock. Uh, I mean, we'll send out some kind of notice to you on yeah. Monday but to, to remind you. That's on Wall Lake. Okay. Is there anything else, Curtis? In Wall Lake at the Community Center? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Anything else? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Please call for a vote. Councilperson Perry? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Motion. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.